Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Inevitable Excess with me, Bring It On. Let's go and speak to a Nebia. Hey, Commander. Nebia's face is mottled red with fresh cuts. Her neck is wrapped in a bloodstained bandage. She holds a dagger with a jagged edge in her hand, and the blade lets out a grating shriek with every pass of the whetstone. We need to talk. Right, so what are you doing here? Nebia grimaces. I decided that abandoning the crusade now, and the final battle, was a lousy thing to do. When we win, I'll be on my way. Hey, are you alright? Oh, you mean the scratch. Nevia points at the bandage around her neck. I got clawed. It's nothing serious. The traitor's croak in her voice suggests the opposite. Tosu moves as if to help her, but she wards him off with a look of irritation. How are things in the camp? I sent most of the soldiers to spread out around the area. We've got thresholds surrounded. We've set up our base of operations here. Somewhere you can rest and replenish your supplies. We're preparing to attack. Didn't I just send you off to the attack on Threshold? Nevi appears at you sympathetically. Been out in the sun too long, Commander. I am positive that I already attacked Threshold. After a brief pause, Nevi cautiously and almost clumsily replies. Your words ring hollow. No, you haven't attacked Threshold yet. You're still preparing. Big battle is still ahead of us. What do you want to talk about? The frantic shrieking of the whetstone on the dagger dies away. I know the big push is coming, and now's not the right time, but... Navia's eyes lock with yours, and you can see the panic in them. We gotta save Beth, before it's too late. Where is Irabeth, and what does she need to be saved from? She's in eyes. One of our units of patrol spotted a band of demons. We gave chase and pursued them all the way to eyes. Then more of the scum jumped out of nowhere, and everything went to pot. We had to split up. Airbeth's group was forced to retreat into some ruins, but we couldn't get to them. I tried, but I almost got the rest of us trapped there too. Nevia touches the bloody bandage, and then I got clawed. Long story short, Beth's somewhere out there still. Alive, I hope. You won't make it through in small groups, and I, darn it all, don't have the right to call a larger troop away from the main attack. Nevia's voice grows louder. I thought of just dropping everything, trying to sneak through on my own, but that's a suicide mission, not a rescue mission. The dagger rings out plaintively as Anebia tosses it against the stones. So what am I supposed to do? Stay here and wait until all of them are killed? Airbeth is fighting the crusade as well. Anebia smiles bitterly. Yep. Amade brought her back from the afterlife and ordered her to fight. She can't lay down her sword until the wound is closed. Amade said the best of us would be needed in the final push. What were the demons like? They were strange. Looked normal enough, but they weren't. There was something off about them. Something wrong. Nevia says these words with particular gravity, her voice edged with steel. I'll find Irabeth. Thanks. Nevia goes strangely limp, the light in her eyes goes out. I hoped you would say that. One time, you dragged me out of the bowels of Canaveras. Now Beth needs your help. I have to go. Alright, let's speak to the storyteller. The storyteller is sickly pale, his dry hand shaking slightly as they clutch a ring of some kind. His white lips whisper something you cannot make out. He senses your footsteps only when you walk right up to him, saying with a start, Who is this? Ah, Commander. Greetings. I'm sorry, I did not recognize your footsteps. My mind is in turmoil, it seems. The storyteller's voice drops to a whisper. I fear that it is playing tricks on me. Uh, please examine the items I'm carrying. Perhaps some of them could tell us a story. Of course, Commander. The storyteller pulls out a handful of items from your bag and suddenly lets out an incoherent shout. I see. I see everything. I'm the invincible commander at the head of a legion of demons marching on Kalarian. I watch as the heavenly light pouring from my hand turns the realms of the accursed Discari and Baphomet to dust. I am sitting in a comfortable chair at a meeting of all-powerful fools who spent the last hundred years trying to figure out what to do about the world wound. No, this is no chair. It's a throne. And all around me are undead servants, and they are bowing obsequiously before me. The storyteller tosses your items aside and collapses. 
I see too many things. Most of them are false, uh, things that never existed. I know these images are untrue, but I feel them as if they were real. Please, take these back. I am not a reliable narrator of their past and future. That was pretty neat, because you can enter this DLC as any one of the mythic paths. So he's describing all the potential mythic paths you could be entering the DLC as. Uh, what's wrong with you? I don't know, Commander. I've been stricken with a strange malaise. I feel myself going mad. Whenever I touch any object, I see not its story like before, but its many possible versions. As if all that ever came to be has cast many shadows in every direction, and I am wandering amongst them. It's terrifying. I'm a frail, blind wanderer. My memory is all I have. I've lived for it, leaned on it. Why, all I am is memory in a decrepit shell. Now my mind is toying with me, and I'm frightened. I do not know what is true. Who are you, one who stands before me? Have we truly met before? Or am I an old madman clinging to a passerby's sleeve, pestering them with my ramblings? He hunches helplessly under the weight of his own terror. I fear the moment when my strength of mind will fade completely, and I'll become a babbling lunatic who talks to rocks. I want to reach out to my past once more, my real past, not one from a vision. In the world wound, there was a tower that once served as my abode. Will you take me there? I'm afraid I no longer have it in me to make the journey alone. I will escort you to your tower. Thank you. Uh, shall we depart at once? A strange ripple passes over the landscape, as if everything is but a reflection in a pond where a stone has just landed. Your senses scream at you that something unnatural is at work here. I'll go ahead. How prettily they burn. Oh, darn magic. There are traps all over, and spells casting something. A strange pair, a wound worm and a crusader in bloodstained armor is absorbed in burning the scrolls on the shelves, not noticing you. If you could burn any great figure, anyone at all, who would it be? Runelord Zutha. He was fat, maybe the fattest there ever was, and I enjoy watching the plump ones pop when the fat inside them comes to a boil. I burned Caden Kalian, before he became a god. Is he had a good joke for every occasion. I wonder what wisecrack he'd come up with atop a bonfire. How did we end up here? I do not know, Commander. I cast no spells. It's as if the world itself transported us here the moment you decided to help me. I have never encountered phenomena of this nature before. You remember these two. I recognize these spiteful voices. The warrior is the traitor's crusader who tried to burn me in the Blackwing Library. Strange. I thought he died in Canabras. And the dragon almost devoured me in my tower. I owe my escape to you. Now listen in silence. The dragon sniffs the air loudly, turns her head straight to you. Who is this I smell? Who is the source of this scent of elven meat, age, and fear? Is it you, the old fellow who wouldn't stop talking? Oh, that's the one I was telling you about. That's the crusader who killed me. He jabs his finger emph emphatically in your direction. You're not the only one who brought down, Caleb. You too. What a coincidence. Do the commander everyone's talking about. If I'd known back then you'd rise so high, dying would have been a bit more of an honor. Who are you? You don't recognize me. I'm Caleb Sazamal. We met at the Blackwing Library in Canabras. Right when I was about to burn this old wreck. Caleb, whose face is familiar to you, points at the storyteller. I'm Devara, Bane of the World Wound. And because of you, my clutch was pillaged, my offspring died before their birth. Do not think I have forgotten. He lets out a vengeful hiss. I rescued her offspring. Well, this might not be the same Devara that we 
met in the wound, uh, in the base game. Is Vamalos warned that there were corrupted copies running around? Which I think the storyteller is one too. I killed both of you. So what are you doing here? Somebody resurrected us. Let's just call him our new employer. You've met him, by the way. Big mechanical fellow with his heart on the outside. Keeps yammering on about what's right and what's anomalous. Anyway, he brought us back to life, and as payment, he demanded that we complete an important mission for him. Important. Navarra scoffs. He simply sent us to clean up a mess. He said this whole tower is steeped in an anomaly. Anomaly? A down to the last pebble. It must be burned along with its contents, without leaving a single page or stone behind. Now, if the opportunity has presented itself, I think we should also incinerate its owner. He shoots the storyteller a menacing look. It's strange. You've never heard of mortals being resurrected by Vamalos before. The primordial inevitable's power is certainly vast. It holds no special influence over life and death. And why you in particular were chosen for this task? Maybe Vamalos could tell we were naturals at burning literature. Or doddering old elves. I was never all that interested in literature myself. I take it you're about to start a fight. I'd love to fight you, but it will have to wait. This time we're following with the orders of your ally. So I guess we're the good guys today. You'll stay out of our way. We'll just turn everything in this place to ash. And you can go about your business. You can leave the elf here if you like. We'll burn him too. And feed on him. The storyteller straightens up. His pale skin glowing faintly, his voice acquiring an unusually regal air. He raises his hands and a shimmer of magic envelops them. Remove your filthy hands from my memories. Whatever they may be, they are mine. And anyone who approaches upon them, I will send to Phrasma as many times as I must. See? The elf is asking for it. What say we kill him together? We'll tell Vamalos that you helped us, and like semi-divine entities are wont to do, we will treat you to some kind of reward, eh? Pick up a piece of paper and study it carefully. The paper is covered in elaborate magical equations. With great difficulty, he managed to make sense of them. These calculations seem to prove that the existence of magic is impossible, and they look eerily convincing. Peeking over your shoulder curiously, Enio says mesmerized. Can the bloodshed wait a little bit, or a little while? 20 minutes or so. I have to make a copy of this and give it some thought. You've changed, Storyteller. The Storyteller's peaceable, harmless demeanor is gone, transforming him into an animated, wrathful mummy. I remember. Remember my days as a mighty warrior, a conqueror of the unknown. Memories of the past and the might of bins overwhelm me, and it feels... good. What are they talking about? Is the tower really an anomaly? I'm unfamiliar with the word anomaly, but yes. My tower is laced with chaotic and impossible memories, which make its existence unnatural. Perhaps an echo of those memories has reached out to me through the tower. But that does not concern me. I am memory. It is my duty to preserve stories, and those who threaten them will witness the power of the greatest archmage of Kionan. How about we ease up on the arson, and go our separate ways? Impossible. We are brought back for a single purpose. I assume that, should we fail to fulfill it, we will drop dead again. And I much prefer being alive. Easy there, Commander. I mean, we're doing the right thing here, and the old fart over there is trying to ruin everything. He's the one you need to deal with, not us. I'm not sure who to side with. Because the dialogue indicated that... Because we passed that one... I think it was a religion check? Let me just check.
Yeah, so it seems to indicate that Valmalos wasn't the one that resurrected these two. But even the storyteller agrees that his tower is corrupted by chaos, or like chaotic magic. So I think I'm going to side with these two. A storyteller, stand down. They must carry out Valmalos' order. Powerful offensive spells coalesce in the storyteller's hands. Then you and I are friends no longer, Commander. It is regrettable, but I must destroy you. You sense that the ground beneath your feet is a little firmer than before. The color is more contrasting, and the sound sharper. Your actions have brought a modicum of stability to this place. Our victory is certain. I mean, that sounds like a good thing to me. The wrong let's see, let's go into spell magic him. Survive me. Oh, that's much easier than I was expecting. The sword teller is writhing on the ground, violently coughing up blood. I'm sorry, Commander. I've forgotten who I am. The changes in my mind have gone too far. Tell me about your connection to the tower. What is wrong with this place? My own understanding is quite limited, Commander. All I know is that this tower and I are connected by a spiritual bond. I am a living font of stories, and the tower is my past, my own story. It has absorbed some chaotic energies of the unreal, and through our bond, they have affected me as well. The scrolls that fill this tower, the knowledge that lies within, is of the same false memories that have appeared in my mind. Why did you attack me? I beg your pardon. My passion for preserving stories has robbed me of my reason. My new recollections may tell the tales of, of that which never existed, but that has not diminished their significance in my mind. I wanted to protect them all. They're just Chaleb and Devara. Happy? We are, as a matter of fact. That's quite the thrilling fight. How should we finish this? Burn him? Or just cut him? Tear him apart. You hurt him, you die. Taylor raises his hands. Whatever you say. The old man bleed out if that's how you like it. Let me help you. No. Storyteller's voice is firm. I can tell that whatever it, it is that's happening to me is wrong. I'm sure you can too. I don't want to harm anyone once it takes over my mind. Leave me, please. Farewell. Farewell, Commander. My will is resolute. I'm gonna find a scroll to protect. Let's help in a little bit, I guess. I don't think that it'll kill her, but... It's also being slowed down, which I don't appreciate. A bright future awaits. Follow my lead. I always love watching fire. Leave me alone. Do not tempt fate. No mistakes. Hmm? Uh. 
Search for the beauty with your heart, not your eyes. Together, we stand. As it should be. Meditate on your mistakes. It might make you feel better. I'm all ears. That is not all right, far. Let's go down below. I will help where I can. The goddess protects us. I didn't want to waste my last dispel magic, but that eh, will be fine. It's getting tired of listening to that and waiting on Sila to catch up. We will win this war. Prepare yourself. Do not fear. Do not waver. Let's try this way. Mind right, over a couple muscle. castings of weird left. I think we'll be fine here. Gonna we'll get Lan and Arushalai inside. Desna, guide my hand into the fray. All right, we'll throw her out of slow over here as well. Make your This will A calculated risk. I will resist. That's no good. I will lend you my aid. All right, spring Denio back. I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> uh, where's it at? My will is resolute. I shall not be free from my path. Cloak of Resist plus seven. Oh, hello there. The Flawless Cloak of Resistance plus seven. This cloak grants its wearer a plus seven resistance bonus on all saving throws. Bonus of the same type usually don't stack. In addition, this cloak grants its wearer immunity to level drain and ability score damage. And a Potion of True Seeing. Really powerful too. Are we ready to Search move out? for the beauty with your heart, not your eyes. Um, who do I give this cloak to? What does she have? I'm gonna give this to her. I guess give those to her as well because she just doesn't have goggles equipped. All right, cool. The world has suffered enough. I 
I know the way. Make every strike. Right, so I don't think we can make it back here. I see crates in the way. Well, neat. That's a really good cloak. And it's good to have one Sila since she's typically the first one into a fight. So if someone's going to get level drained, it'd probably be her. Okay, so the storyteller is rocking some pretty good gear too. Let's take a look at this stuff. So your amulet of natural armor plus six. I don't know if anyone even wears. I took care of that already. I don't think anybody's wearing amulets of natural armor anymore. Oh, he needs an upgrade. Oh, the merchant sells... Here we go. I think the merchant sells a plus six version of this. I'll have to check when we go back. Also... There we go. A little boost to his damage. Oh, ring of protection plus six. I don't think anybody's wearing a ring of protection... Well, she is, but it's already a plus six. All right, uh, gloves of arcane eradication. These gloves grant the wearer a plus four bonus to range, touch, attack spells, and a plus five competence bonus on use magic device skill checks. I think we've seen those before in the base game. Albert skin boots. This is the gift of Turval, the loyal defender of Varnhold and the court master that knows no equal in leatherworking. These boots grant they wear immunity to slowing and paralyzing effects, entanglement, and difficult terrain. Right, uh, goggles of mind control. These goggles grant the wearer a plus two inherent bonus to caster level and increase the save DC by two for all mind affecting spells the wearer casts. An headband of mental perfection and a belt of physical perfection and true serenity. The shirt grants his wearer spell resistance 34 against the enemies of chaotic alignment. Yeah, that works. All right, guess back to camp. The path of the commander, which seemed to be drawing toward its logical conclusion, has unexpectedly taken a new turn. But there's no time to marvel at the twist of fate. The world is under threat. The wielder of extraordinary powers must deal with it, whether he wishes to or not. The world wound yawns. The world wound yawns wide before the commander, as hostile as ever. Or perhaps it's not quite the same as always. The commander decides that he should. Take a good look around. There's nothing out of the ordinary about the scene at first glance. But upon closer inspection, oddities begin to appear. Quite literally appear. Eyes is now are coming to view on the horizon, though it was not there before. Or perhaps it was there all along, and has only been revealed now that the skies are clear. Speaking of which, when did the world wound last experience clear skies? On the other hand, one never knows what strange phenomena the world wound might produce. Perhaps fair weather is one of them. The world wound yawns wide before the commander is hostile. Oh, we've already read that. I return to the entrance, the threshold. 
It is strange, but the road to the commander's destination seems much shorter than it first appeared. It seemed as though the commander had only just set foot on the path before the journey was already at its end. Of course, one could argue that all of this is but the work of the commander's imagination. After all, one's memory tends to only record vivid experiences. The mon monotonous trek here can hardly be described as such. But this is not the first strange thing the commander has experienced here. The weather is another oddity. Now, the commander senses a strange unreality in the events unfolding here. What is really going on? Oh yeah, I should probably equip these headbands that I have. Oh, I keep forgetting to use that. I mean, this is okay, but I tend to one-shot whatever I charge. So that last effect, where the enemy suffers a minus two penalty to armor class against range attacks for four rounds, isn't that great. It's good for boss fights where Lan and Arushlai can't contribute, but typically they're not going to survive that initial charge anyway, so I think this is the better option. Well, that was a waste, but that's okay. Alright, I'm gonna call the episode here, and the next one we'll speak to Hylor, and I guess head to Eyes after that, unless he takes us somewhere like the storyteller did. But we'll find out next time. So for now, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.